Asia. Welcome to the Philippine metropolis of the future, Clark Green City. Clark's strategic location and connectivity infrastructure makes it a viable if not better alternative to Metro Manila's traffic congestion. And this is expected to happen in the new Clark City, a new economic center north of the capital. Clark City is part of the Clark Special Economic Zone. It's approximately 32,000 hectares. To put that in perspective, that's about half of Metro Manila. And New Clark City is the next frontier of development in this area. It is envisioned to be the first green, smart, and completely resilient city in the country. The new Clark City will eventually become the center of governance through the planned National Government Administrative Center. You cannot just develop a large track of land uh, just like that. You have to have something that would catalyze. I want to call this the Queen Bee, no? where the Queen Bee is, which is the government, the soldiers of the bees will follow, and that's the private sector. Based on our rough estimation, Two million person trips a day will be out of the system in Metro Manila if only, government only, will transfer there. The new Clark City will be at par with international standards while at the same time providing the venue to present our roots as Filipinos through its architecture and design. We want this city to be luxurious in terms of design. Part of the entire requirement that we, we believe organic to this city is the philosophy of the Bahay Kubo. Right now, we are just modernizing that same approach. And these are the architecture of the sea games, the architecture of the government buildings, the architecture of the houses for the athletes and the government employees. The National Government Administrative Center will be developed as one of the most resilient infrastructure in the new Clark City. The type of green that they're putting in the ground, that's very important. We're looking at a master plan that really considered the site where it is. The river is a very good example. So preserving the river, looking at leaving the easements open to offer that recreational space, that leisure space, the environmental protection, and at the same time increasing property values near that area. They're able to build better from the start. So you see things like very wide roadways that have protected bike lanes, that have very wide sidewalks, and not just in one area, but a whole network connecting all of the places around the development. The good thing is we will have offices, residential, schools, sports facilities, parks, beautiful nature that will be kept, you know, a certain ratio of openness. You don't feel that you are sandwiched by two buildings. 60% of the development will be reserved for green spaces and 40% will be developed. Based on our rough estimation, two million person trips a day will be out of the system in Metro Manila if only government only will transfer there. The new Clark City will be at par with international standards while at the same time providing the venue to present our roots as Filipinos through its architecture and design. Second is they can expect that the transportation is going to be world class. It's going to be integrated and interconnected and there will be an underground train station for the terminal complex of Clark, similar to what you see in Hong Kong and other the railway connecting Subic to Clark all the way to the north and all the way to Manila and to the south in Batangas. All of this makes Clark at the center of all the infrastructure development under the President's Build, Build, Build program. 
that puts Clark in a very strategic location at the center of all these developments. New Clark City is designed to set a new and higher standard for a community, modern, well-planned, sustainable, and resilient. Medini Iskandar, Malaysia, Asia's future vibrant city. Located in Iskandar, Malaysia, its proximity to Asia's economic powerhouses makes Medini a strategic destination. A new urban township in the heart of Nusa Jaya, Johor, Medini, covers an area of about 2,000 acres of greenfield land that is located nearby Singapore. Medini is surrounded by developed residential areas, leisure and tourism districts, state government administrative center, international film and TV studio, and education hub. Medini is also proud to house the Legoland Malaysia Resort, the first Legoland in Asia. Introduced in 2007, Medini is fast becoming a premier commercial location for local and multinational companies. Four integrated development clusters, the Compass, the Crescent, the Pulse and the Park, have been envisaged to propel Medini's positioning as the CBD of New Sajaya. The Compass a flagship development cluster that will further strengthen Medini's position as the central business district of New Sajai. The Compass will feature premium purpose-built office buildings with key supporting lifestyle amenities interweaved in a luxurious development. The Pulse, where business meets convenience, is a premier development cluster in progress. Medini 6 the first purpose-built office building, completed in 2014. Practical design with an access to a cafe. This office is already occupied by local and international companies. Medini 7. This four-story office building was opened in August 2015. With efficient office space, it attracts the growing demands from global business services industry. Designed with the elite in mind for a modern, yet conducive working environment, this building is expected to be completed in 2018. Floor plates ranging from 15,000 square feet to 30,000 square feet per floor, with options to divide them into various quadrants. A range of smart building solutions, such as the Integrated Operations Center, will be part of the Medini Smart City Initiative. A gym, an eatery, a convenience store and banking facilities are some of the planned amenities. Medini offers unique development products of other prominent developers and well-known operators that will meet the needs of local and international communities.
with vast area of lush greenery and parks and water bodies. These are elements that make Nadini an attractive option for the future population. Implementation of a structured township management services and its vision of becoming a sustainable and integrated smart city will make Medini the live wire of Asia. Medini Iskander Malaysia. Invest now. Indonesia is set to move its capital to eastern Borneo, replacing the crowded megacity of Jakarta. Indonesian President Joko Widodo revealed the location of the new capital on Monday, saying it's in an area that's the least prone to natural disasters and is a strategic location at the center of Indonesia. Currently, just 10 million people live on Borneo, the third largest island on Earth. Hasil kajian-kajian tersebut menyimpulkan bahwa lokasi Ibu kota baru yang paling ideal adalah di sebagian Kabupaten Penajam Pasar Utara dan sebagian di Kabupaten Kutai Kartanegara, Provinsi Kalimantan Timur. Indonesia has picked a site for its new capital. It will move from Jakarta to Borneo Island's East Kalimantan province. The new capital doesn't have a name just yet. It occupies an area near the existing Samarinda city and the port city of Balikpapan. And President Joko Widodo says this is a strategic location at the center of Indonesia, close to a growing urban area. And the physical relocation is set to begin in 2024, but Mr. Widodo said preliminary plans would commence soon. The estimated price tag, $33 billion. The president says another reason for picking East Kalimantan is that it's at minimal risk of natural disasters and says it's urgent to relocate from Jakarta. Well, the overcrowded and highly polluted metropolis is one of the fastest sinking cities on earth. And details are from Chani Vatvani. President Joko Widodo in his announcement earlier outlined a number of reasons for the move. He said the burden on Jakarta is now too heavy, not only as an administrative center, but also a center for business, finance, trade and services, in addition to its airport and port, which are the biggest in the country. The burden of Java, Indonesia's most populous island on which Jakarta is located, is also getting heavier, he said, with 54% of Indonesia's total population living in Java, which serves as a source of food security and the island contributing 58% of Indonesia's GDP. Mr. Widodo said this cannot be the situation any longer. Kita tidak bisa terus menerus membiarkan beban Jakarta dan beban Pulau Jawa yang semakin berat dalam hal kepadatan penduduk. Kemacetan lalu lintas yang sudah terlanjur, parah dan polusi udara dan air yang harus segera kita tangani. Dan ini bukan kesalahan Pemprov DKI Jakarta, bukan. Tetapi terlebih karena be besarnya beban yang diberikan perekonomian Indonesia kepada Pulau Jawa dan kepada Jakarta. He also said the economic disparity between the island of Java and outside of it have continued to increase and the move will seek to spread economic activity outside of Indonesia's most populous island. Pembangunan Ibu Kota Baru ini bukan satu-satunya upaya pemerintah dalam mengurangi kesenjangan Pulau Jawa dan luar Jawa. Karena selain itu pemerintah juga akan membangun industrialisasi di luar Jawa berbasis hilirisasi sumber daya alam. The government has 180,000 hectares of land available to develop the new capital in and the amount of funds required for the move is currently estimated to be about 32 billion US dollars. According to President Widodo, East Kalimantan has been chosen because of its minimal risk to natural disasters, its strategic location in the country. It is also close to urban areas that have been developed, such as Balikpapan and Samarinda. He also said there was relatively complete infrastructure and government-controlled land available. 
Construction is estimated to take three to four years, with the relocation itself estimated to begin in 2024.